A Haunting in Venice. Non-spoiler review. Whew. I was a little tired going into it. And it's got a pace. It has its very specific... Um, you know, kind of like a, a, a thriller pace almost. Uh, a, uh, an elongated mystery. Um, and unfortunately, I missed at least 10 minutes of it at one point. I was like, dang. I thought about that before I made it to the movie, too. I'm like, I wonder if I'll make it through this whole thing. Didn't. I missed a little bit. And I missed a little bit of reveals, too, unfortunately. So that part kind of pooped out on me. But, Haunting in Venice. Of the Poirot movies that I've seen that have been done in the last ten years now. It's been like seven. Murder on the Orient. It was fine. I skipped Death on the Nile. I saw... Too much bad reaction and just like, eh, do I need to spend two hours watching something that might not be that great? I I have I have I've been okay. I've been satisfied with Kenneth Branagh's uh, rendition of Hercule Poirot. He's you know I had seen some of the BBC productions whenever I was a kid. I'd listen to Agatha Christie. You know, uh, radio shows growing up. Um, I, I had my own uh, visual representation of who he was. I hadn't read, I only read one Agatha Christie book growing up, too. Um, and it was with Miss Marple, it wasn't even with her cure. But um, I would say, of the trilogy, if you would, of these movies, this is the best one they've done so far. Um, They've got a great cast. They've got Jeremy Dornan, Michelle Yao, um, Tina Fey. That was random. Um, I, I can't spot out any of the other actors' names because I didn't recognize them. I think uh, Dornan, Jamie Dornan worked with Kenneth Branagh in a, another film, a black and white, about being raised in Ireland. Uh, I think around the First World War? I forget. I remember it being a good movie, and Dornan got an Academy Award nomination for that, so he must, I mean, he and Kenneth Branagh probably work well together. Um, but this movie, it's suspenseful. Uh, it's got a moment of kind of, it's got moments of freaky, so it's got like a horror spin to it. So take murder mystery, but with like a little bit of horror to it. I I like that angle. Um, can't say the music necessarily stood out in this movie. Uh, the the set designs. I mean, you know the the uh, broad sweeping shots of Venice at the beginning to give Venice kind of its own character. I mean, it is the name of the movie, a murder in you know Venice. And um, it, it kind of, it's like, it gives, it breathes life into Venice itself. So it opens up by kind of characterizing. Um, the very beginning has some cool uh, nostalgia feeling things. It was set in 1947, two years after the big war. That's kind of a neat idea in the streets of Venice. Can't imagine what it was like in Italy two years after the war was over. Um, you know, and the, the haunting itself, it was, uh, it was an, it was a interesting take on, you know, his skepticism and how it plays into, you know, what's haunted and what's reality. Um, the acting was really good all around, um, Tina Fey kind of reminded me of like a His Girl Friday character. He he was he was pretty good doing what he does. This kind of uh, eccentric character, and uh, yeah, the the script was good. The dialogue was good. Some of the reveals were good. I missed a little bit of the reveal, which I believe I didn't do the math on this one. The Point six one eight moment. I suspect it was right around where I passed out for ten minutes. 
Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say about the movie. The cast was good and the script was good. That's really, I mean, it's a dialogue heavy, um, atmospheric movie. Uh, the camera shots were fascinating. So Kenneth Branagh, who plays the lead, also directs, and he had a lot of upshots where um, he'd be doing something like this for a sequence. And then a lot of his shots, too, were um, like characters talking here, and then in the next moment, the, char the opposite character talking over here. So he had these very interesting camera shots all throughout the movie um, with upward angles and, and side and like single frame side shots those are those are interesting um, the set design was really nice like I said the the color palette of the movie overall was fascinating it's darker but it had these like lights I guess something that lightened how dark it was all throughout um, the reveal is kind of caught me off guard the ending reveal I, I didn't see coming the the official murderer you know um, I didn't guess exactly so and I, I've stayed away from the material one of the best things that I have done in relation to watching any movie anymore is staying completely away from the um, the campaign the, the commercials and the, and the trailers Trying to stay away from the hype is the only thing that I haven't been able to stay away from in relation to movies. When I hear the negative hype, I kind of just don't bother or I'll wait. Whenever I hear the positive hype, it builds. You know, like I can't wait to see the creator. I think that's going to be a phenomenal movie. Um, out of 10, given that I think I would rate Ori Murder on the Orient as like a 5 to 6. I'd have to go back and check how I actually rated that, but I that's how I remember. And I'm guessing Death on the Nile has more of like a three to four. This is a solid like six, seven out of ten. Um, should you rush out and see it in theater? Only if you want to go and see something for the Halloween season that that has some of the Halloween spirit. Because ultimately, this is one you could probably wait and watch at home. Turn the lights off. Maybe light a candle for the seance and uh, enjoy yourself. But do you need to see it in theater? Meh. Anyways, if you have any thoughts about the movie, if you have any thoughts about any of the uh, Agatha Christie films, comment down below. Like, subscribe, because that's what you're supposed to say when you post these things. And, uh, you know, tell me what you think. I'm tired. Anyways, Zach the Bartender signing off. Don't have a good day. Have a great one.